Hey, this is Jason Bellamy with Builder Buddy. I'm going to go over a well inspection report. And on our cover photo, we like to show the wellhead here, in this case, the plastic rock in relationship to the house, because it's not always obvious where it is or what it is. Um, in this case, it's pretty straightforward. It's not uh, hidden in the woods. Uh, most wellheads are often covered by these plastic rocks, but sometimes they're concrete cylinders, wood structures, or other enclosures. Um, so there is our cover photo. He, we have blue, orange, and red comments. In this case, we only have two blue comments. These are just maintenance items. So this was a very good report and nice system. Inspection details just goes over the conditions on the day of the inspection as far as weather goes. Uh, our inspectors like to present themselves in video sometimes, especially when the buyer wasn't able to show up for the inspection. This is handy. This is your county information. So if you have questions about your well, uh, this is the phone number to contact the county uh, health department. Overview goes over clearances and setbacks. So mainly we're looking for proper clearances between your wellhead and potential contaminants like your septic system, uh, potentially animals, animal barns, um, or grading if the um, if the grade slopes toward the wellhead or the grade the wellhead is below grade, then water can get into that wellhead and potentially contaminate the system. The pressure system is this is uh, it's typically in the crawl space or basement. This is a fiberglass tank. A lot of times you'll see metal blue tanks. This one is about holds about 22 gallons. They have these bladders which hold water. The purpose of the pressure tanks is um, to act as an intermediary between the pump and the household. We don't, what we don't want is the pump to turn on and turn off every time someone turns on a faucet real quick to, you know, to just wash something. Uh, what will happen over time is that that will wear the pump, which is one of the more expensive components in the system. So the pressure tank here in this case, what it does is it uh, the pump will fill up that pressure tank and then over the next 22 gallons, instead of uh, requiring that the pump turns on, the um, we're just receiving that pressure from the pressure tank. So there's less wear and tear on the uh, pump and it's providing nice um, sort of stable pressure for the household. And part of the pressure system equipment is the pressure switch that's here and that just that tells the pump when to turn on when the pressure is low, typically at around 40 PSI, or when it's high at 60 PSI, then it tells the pump to shut off, and then it'll be pulling water from the pressure tank. Right now, um, it costs about $2,000, more or less, in our area to replace this whole system, which uh, has about an 8 to 12 year life expectancy. In this case, it was manufactured in 2019, and that's good. That means we have lots of years left before we have to worry about it. This is the main shutoff. Uh, some more pictures of the pressure system components. Here is the sediment filter. The sediment filter is basically filtering out grit, um, just larger particles from the water. It's not, um, it's not chlorinating, it is not softening, it is not filtering out iron. It's just taking out the larger grit sand particles. We often take a picture of the toilet tanks uh, and put them in our report because it just sort of gives you an idea of this, the quality of water going into the house. In this case, we're seeing some grit sediment coming in and a little bit of reddish uh, quality to the water, which might tell us there's some iron. In this case, uh, minimal, we're calling this minimal sediment in the tank. We've seen much worse, but we do want to stay on top of replacing these sediment filters. Here's a nice link on how to do that. So uh, you can, some of them you can wash, others you just replace. Uh, the pressure tank, so these pressure tanks, uh, the plastic one that I showed you above, they have a Schrader valve, like a bicycle valve, that, uh, and so they can lose pressure over time, which is why it's important to have a well contractor come once a year and check your pressure switch because those settings can sort of change over time and the you can lose pressure in your pressure tank. 
and other things can go wrong. So uh, in this case, this pressure tank needs a little bit more air. It, it was uh, manufactured in 2019, so we're not it, it, suspecting bigger issues. Sometimes low pressure can tell us that the pressure tank is failing, which we're not expecting in this case. Wellhead and housing. So um, here's our plastic rock. And below the plastic rock is our wellhead. There's not many components here. Typically, there's the um, pipe, which is typically PVC going from the wellhead to the house. There's a faucet, which is needed for maintenance inspection purposes. Here is the wire. So this is, this is serving the submersible pump at the bottom of this shaft here. And there's a couple other things. There's a metal plate on top of that uh, wellhead, which should always be sealed. It should have a vent. It uh, just allows to, um, the air going in and out to sort of create a equilibrium and pressure. Um, and we want to see that this, the enclosure, whatever it is, in this case, it's a plastic rock, um, fake rock. It, we want to make sure it's in good condition so nothing can get in and contaminate the well. And this is insulation. The insulation is needed to prevent uh, freezing and bursting of this pipe. We often see that. I've, I've shown up at several inspections in the wintertime, in the morning, and just seen uh, water um, flooding out of these because the pipe had burst overnight. So that's the purpose of the insulation. This has fiberglass um, bat inside, um, but the plastic encapsulates it and prevents it from becoming moisture damage. Sometimes oh, it's very common to see that people just stuff this with a fiberglass bat, it's no bag, and that can cause a bunch of issues. One, it just be, it doesn't really insulate anymore once it becomes moisture damaged. The other thing is that fiberglass could potentially contaminate your well because there are openings in that wellhead. And the other thing is you're going to get things like um, mice and other pests that are going to use it as nesting material. So that is why we like to see well bags. And there's a link uh, for that in a report if you uh, need to buy one. Uh, all systems after 2009 should have a well and pump tag information. They're supposed to be stamped on these plates. And um, that tells, in the case of the well info, it will give us the installer information, how deep it is. In this case, it's 625 feet. The static water level on the day of the installation. So this was where sort of the water's happy place uh, on the day of the installation. So it's 100 feet down. That can fluctuate depending on the season, the years, other factors, rain. Uh, yield was 20 GPM. It was on the day of the installation. So uh, it, this was a good system when it was installed. And the pump tag information, it's important because it tells us how deep that pump is. The reason why that's important is because as you pull out water, um, the, the water level can drop, sometimes precipitously. And if it starts, if it goes below the pump, it will fry the pump because we don't want a situation where the pump is just pulling air. So um, this also tells us how much water is available for the household. That's why it's important to have the pump tag information. And the date of install, 2019, well pumps have about a 20 year life expectancy. So this is uh, another good thing for the home buyer here. This is a newer pump, newer pressure system equipment. It's all been replaced in 2019, that's great. So um, that is the well and pump tag info, which should be present after 2009. It's, it's not um, uncommon for them to be missing or that the seller has them in the, somewhere in their office. So if we cannot find them at the wellhead, you should ask the seller if they know where they are. In some cases, the county has that information. Um, or if you can contact the installer, find the installer. And we often recommend some sort of protection for the wellhead, especially when we have grassy areas near the road or if the wellhead is very close to the road. It's People love to sort of drive off road and drop off soil or gravel or construction materials or all kinds of reasons. You know, at night, guests could very easily come and reverse into the wellhead and cause very expensive damages and, and water disruption. So that's why we recommend some sort of 
bollard or barrier, which uh, is a fancy way for saying it could be simple as a six by six post in the ground, which would prevent damage to that well head. And here is our well and pump performance test. So it's a fancy phrase for we're simulating normal household use. Uh, a typical household could use up to 250 gallons a day, so let's say 125 gallons in the morning. They usually households use most of the water when they wake up in the morning, get ready for work or whatever they're going to do, and they come back toward the end of the day, make dinner and wash dishes, and the um, start the washer and dishwasher. So um, we want to see that the system is able to um, provide adequate water during these peak use periods. So uh, we have a sounder that we use, and it tells us where the water level is. And um, typically when we show up on site, the, the water level at the static water level, so it's at its happy place, and then we start pulling water down, and usually what we'll see is that water level will drop precipitously. And then as we stop pulling water, it will slowly climb back up. Sometimes it will take minutes hours, in some cases days, to get back to where it was. So what we want to see is that every well system should have excellent recovery. So that's how long it takes for that water to get back up. It's just pulling water in from the surrounding grade to uh, the static water level. Or we want to see that it has a lot of volume, so that well is very deep. There's a lot of water available above the pump so that Although it does not have good recovery, there's hundreds of gallons available. So for most households, that well system would still be able to provide uh, that, that water that's needed. In some cases, some households require a cistern or additional water storage in this case. In this case, we see that this line, it's atypical it, in this way, and it, it's good that it's nearly horizontal. It's, the water level is not dropping precipitously the water is nearly recovering as quickly as we're pulling it out. And by the end of the test, it's already back at where it was. So this is a very, very good recovery. Um, so now going over what we like to see, we want to make sure we have good recovery, good volume, and good flow. We only need one or the other as far as uh, recovery and volume. We always want to see good flow. But in this case, we have everything is great. So recovery well is more than three GPM uh, gallons per minute. So that's excellent. Our volume, we have more than 300 feet of, of water available. So um, that's excellent. And then our flow rate, we were getting more than five GPM. Um, so that is excellent as well. So uh, really good flow test results here. So this was an example of a nice system, and uh, thanks for watching.